Trojan Sports Now. Hello and welcome to Trojan Sports Now. I'm Danielle Percival. And I'm Jonathan Sellers. Stick around as we bring you the latest news and scores from Troy Sports. In what could possibly be the final time Troy faces a longtime Sunbelt rival, the Trojans sent Middle Tennessee back to Murfreesboro with a warm farewell. Justin McNelly has the story. Hoping to extend their three-game winning streak, the Trojan baseball team took to the field against rival Middle Tennessee State on Friday for a three-game series. The Friday night opener sent the Trojans home with an unforgettable win. After Miss playing a fly ball in left field that scored the tying run, Josh McDormand stepped up to the plate and delivered a game-winning single to give the Trojans a 3-2 win. It was a tough play in the gap, and uh, I was fortunate enough to get to it and wish I had come down with it, but uh, I knew uh, these guys were going to pick me up and get on base, and it just happened to be my turn uh, coming up to bat. So I was looking forward to the opportunity and cashed in. Saturday was more the same from the Trojan pitching staff as junior Will Starling pitched lights out for seven shutout innings and Nate Hill and Matt Howard preserved the shutout. Howard would also add an RBI on the day and the Trojans would take home the three to nothing victory. Every time he got in a jam, he made that big, big pitch to get himself out of the jam. I just thought he pitched uh, extremely well in, in getting out of jams. And with a chance for the sweep on Sunday, the Trojans sent Shane McCain to the mound. McCain threw seven innings and recorded nine strikeouts on the way to a 5-3 to three win. Logan Pierce had a good day from the plate as he went three for four with an RBI, and Tyler Vaughn added two more RBIs as well. Shane McCain was outstanding, uh, you know, electric early in the game. I mean, he's just been fantastic. He was again today, and that's the story of today's game. Oh, man, they're everything. Um, they're, they're throwing so good right now. Um, I don't know who's going to beat us because uh, they're just uh, incredible. Um, you know, it's, it's where it starts. Uh, and we, you know, we put runs on the board, but they keep runs on the scoring. Justin McNelly, Trojan Sports Now. And Troy was back in action again on Tuesday night at home, looking for some revenge against Alabama State, who had beaten the Trojans earlier in the year. Once again, Justin was there and has the recap. The Trojans got a bit of redemption on Tuesday night as they were able to ease the sting from an earlier loss this year to the Alabama State Hornets as the Trojans would coast to a 10-3 victory. I really did like tonight. Um, we got some guys back in the lineup that have started for us before, played a lot for us before, but got going in the season kind of slow. Been doing a lot of work on the side and in practice and Finally got an opportunity to get them back in, and I thought they played well. The Trojan offense scored 11 runs in the three-game series against Middle Tennessee this past weekend, but belted out 10 runs in the victory over the Hornets. Danny Collins and Trey Santos led the Trojans offensively with three RBIs each, and Logan Pierce pitched in an RBI as well. I'm just glad to you know, help the team win off of last week's performance. It was a... Uh, Pretty bad on my part, didn't really do much to help, but uh, today glad I could uh, you know, score some runs and uh, get a few hits out of it, so I was really happy with it. Kind of frustrated with my last couple of bats, but other than that, you know, it works. We got a W. The Trojans saw a total of eight pitchers over eight innings of at-bats and fell as if the Hornets were just trying to disrupt a little bit of their offensive rhythm. But it is hard to hit when every time you come up, it's a new guy. You know, you never do get to really settle in, so I think we did a pretty good job handling that. These midweek games, they try to get a lot of arms in. Uh, try to throw a lot of different guys at you, get you some different looks, maybe. Um, uh, but they did, and I thought they did a good job of mixing it up. Um, kind of threw us off a little bit, but you know we got in the groove. Justin McNelly, Trojan Sports Now. Well, when you haven't been in action in over a week, you might think the team could be a little rusty, but not the Troy softball team. Tuesday, the Trojans swept a doubleheader at Southern Miss in two comeback victories. In Game 1, the Trojans were down 7-0 after the second inning, but scored 9 unanswered to win an extra innings 9-7. Caitlin Ortiz hit a two-run homer to center field to complete the comeback in the eighth inning and score the winning runs. That victory gave head coach Melanie Davis her 850th career victory at Troy. And in the night cap, Troy was again trailing, this time 4-1 before a five-run fifth inning put the Trojans on top for a 6-4 victory. Senior Michaela Hamilton pitched a complete game for the Trojans, including retiring the last 10 batters she faced. The men's golf team wrapped up competition at the Bancor South Intercollegiate Tuesday and finished the tournament in ninth place. Jake Tucker turned in the low round for the Trojans in the final day of competition, finishing one under par and tied for 22nd. Tolver Dozier had a nice comeback Tuesday with a one over par final round after a six over par second round. 
Mississippi State won the team title with a three-round score of 846. The Troy University track and field team had a successful day at the Jaguar Invitational at South Alabama on Saturday. Troy won eight events on the day, including both 4x100-meter relays and the 4x400-meter relay. Individually, Ja'Courtney Alexander won the 400-meter dash and 400-meter hurdles. Benjamin Martin won the 100-meter dash, with Jordan Landberg placing third. And Landberg would then go on to win the 200-meter dash. Nicolo Bolo won the hammer throw, winning the event by almost seven meters. And Jasmine Patton and Christina Barrett it took second and third in the 100-meter hurdles. And the men's track and field team is receiving recognition in the region, being ranked ninth in the USTF CCCA Division I regional rankings. The Trojans are the top team from the Sun Belt in the rankings, with Middle Tennessee and South Alabama both making the top 15. Landberg is third in the South region in the 200-meter dash for the Trojans' highest individual ranking. The Trojans' 4x100-meter relay team of Nico Freeman, Landberg, Benjamin Martin, and Philip Pritchett is fifth in the region. After picking up a win against DePaul on Saturday, the Trojan men's tennis team couldn't wrap up the weekend with another win. The Trojans dropped a 4-0 decision to Illinois State in the Middle Tennessee Shootout Consolation Bracket Final on Sunday. Troy lost all four of the day's singles matches in three sets. With the loss, the Trojans' record drops to 8-13 on the year. While the women's team continued their impressive stretch, stretching their winning streak to 7 with four with a 4 to nothing win over Louisiana Lafayette on Saturday. The women are now 4 and 0 against Sunbelt teams and 14 and 4 overall. Well, within the past few weeks, conference realignment has become a hot topic again with the addition of a few teams to the Sunbelt as well as the departure of another squad, of course. Talking about the additions to the Sunbelt, we've got App State, Georgia Southern, New Mexico State, and Idaho. Interesting teams that are being brought into the Sun Belt, not exactly maybe where we thought the conference might have been heading. Well, exactly, and uh, we haven't done this, this segment since football season, and, and this is all really about football season. Um, right. All these conference realignments are definitely about, um, about what's going on with football teams and about bringing in money for that, not necessarily the other sports. But this one is all about football, and as you said, it's, it's some uh, – it's definitely not regionally right. um, located, some of these schools like New Mexico State and Idaho, but they've both been in the Sun Belt before. Uh, they left to go to um, the WAC, I believe, but now they're returning because they were both independents last year and didn't have uh, a conference they were aligned with. So um, they will be in the Sun Belt next, or in uh, two years. Or right, I believe those teams will be entering in 2014. Now, those two FCS schools that are moving up to the FBS level, I think they'll be coming in and then be fully emerged in the conference in 2015. It's also confusing just you right. don't know who's coming when because I, I know we've also got, uh, looking at this graphic, we've got uh, Georgia State's coming next year right. uh, and uh, Texas Southern or Texas State, I'm not even sure, but right. they're coming so next year. So it, it's going to be weird just to, to figure out who's in the conference, who's in what. I know a, f a bunch of former Sun Belt teams are going to Conference USA. Absolutely, because um, right now the Conference USA looks more like the Sun Belt than the Sun Belt does for those of us who have been fans and follow the exactly. Sun Belt for years past. I mean, with all those teams from what we know as the Sun Belt heading to the Conference USA, it's, it's really weird looking at it. Exactly, and somebody made a good point the other day uh, in something I was reading is if you're a fan of Troy, who are you going to be more excited to go see a game between? Are you going to rather go see Troy play uh, 0 and 8 FIU team or FAU team or, or go watch Troy play Appalachian State for the first time, a team that right. um, beat Michigan in the big house. Right. I mean, there, there's a lot of name attention that comes with Appalachian State. They've had some good players over the years. So having them come to the Sun Belt will be a, a good name, as well as Georgia Southern. They're a very strong team who's had um, some good competition along the way um, or some good teams along the Absolutely. way in, in 1AA in the championship. And then, of course, trying to figure out where the conference is going to go from here as far as the Sun Belt is concerned. There has been a lot of speculation seen like through CBS and everything that trying to figure out who's going to be coming in that maybe like a James Madison or a Liberty. And it's just interesting to see how it's all going to play out because, I mean, for a while it seemed like conference realignment had kind of slowed back right. down. And then all of a sudden it's all right back there at the forefront of the topic. And, and I, I don't think we're done with it. I think that uh, some dominoes are still going to fall and, and I believe that you're going to have three or four major mega conferences, and, and Troy will probably be left out of that, and, and all the money will be kept in those main conferences, and all the schools that are in Conference USA and the Sun Belt will be kind of playing on a, a whole separate level, almost like a 1AA. Um, don't know when that'll be, but it's going to be sometime in the future. Um, and I've, I've heard 
uh, people in this university believe the same thing is going to happen, that it's just not a matter of uh, if, but when. when. Um, but as we said, with all this talk, that it, it's mainly about football, but what does it do for the rest of our sports? We're losing right. a lot of good basketball schools that are going to Conference USA, Absolutely. Middle Tennessee, Western Kentucky. I don't know a lot about the teams that are coming in. I know that New Mexico State and Idaho are both just coming in football only. So it's the right. other, other sports we have to um, pay attention to and see how their baseball programs are, uh, how their basketball programs are, and other things. So um, it'll be interesting to see just how this develops over the next few years, um, how it affects our recruiting and things like that, and just and, and what we have to deal with. But And you mentioned it, it's, it's all about the money, though. It's all, exactly, all about the money. That's all college athletics is about these days. So. Absolutely. Trojan Sports Now.